In the quest for professional growth and career advancement, success often hinges on your ability to make informed decisions and to think critically. However, did you know that hidden forces can influence our thoughts and sometimes lead us astray? In this video, we'll dive into five of the most common cognitive biases, often referred to as mental shortcuts. Together, we'll explore their impact on our thinking and decision-making, and even more importantly, we also uncover strategies to outsmart these cognitive traps so that you can make the right decisions to propel your career forward. Hello and a very warm welcome to the channel. My name is Sabine Renner. I'm an organizational psychologist, leadership coach and trainer, and a former corporate finance professional with over a decade of hands-on corporate leadership experience. And on this channel, I provide you with insights that will empower you to excel in your career and advance in your leadership journey. Now, to take a first step toward clear and critical thinking, let's dive into the enlightening research of renowned scientist Daniel Kahneman. He introduced a dual model of thinking, System 1 and System 2, also known as Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow, which, by the way, is also the title of his highly recommendable book. Now, what are these systems about and what do they have to do with cognitive biases? Let me explain. System 1, our intuitive or automatic thinking mode, operates swiftly and oftentimes relies on heuristics. A heuristic is a mental shortcut or a rule of thumb that our brain uses to make quick judgments and decisions. These shortcuts are often based on past experiences and knowledge, allowing us to simplify complex problems and to arrive at solutions much more rapidly. Now, heuristics are valuable because they save much time and mental effort. However, they can also introduce biases and errors into our decision-making processes, as they may not always lead to the most accurate or rational outcomes. Now, to avoid these biases and hasty judgments, we actually have to move from system one thinking to system to thinking, which is our deliberate analytical mode that demands conscious effort and requires time, energy and attention. It operates much more slowly but with far better precision and therefore helps us handle complex, novel and critical decisions. You could also call System 2 our champion of rationality. Moving into this more conscious and deliberate mode of thinking is the basis for identifying biases. Here are five of the most common ones that you should watch out for. Bias number one. Confirm Confirmatory bias. Confirmatory bias causes us to search for, interpret and remember information in a way that confirms with our pre-existing beliefs or hypotheses. This bias is rooted in the human tendency to favor information that supports our existing views while discounting or ignoring information that contradicts them. Now, imagine you're a sales manager considering a product launch strategy. You lean towards an approach aligned with past successful launches. You might emphasize data supporting this choice, ignoring conflicting market research on shifting customer preferences. Now, this bias can hinder your decision making by overlooking valuable insights. Now, what can we do to counter confirmatory bias? Well, first of all, it's important to understand your own perspective. Ask yourself, what do I actually think about this? And how do I feel about this? Then challenge yourself. What could be a different way of looking at this? Become your own devil's advocate and challenge your thinking. Then seek and consider contradictory information that helps you critically evaluate your beliefs and perspectives. Seeking feedback from others is another great way to ensure a more balanced and informed decision-making process. Bias number two is the anchor bias. The anchor bias leads us to favor information which we initially received during the decision-making process. This early information, referred to as an anchor, becomes a fixed reference point and we often struggle to make the necessary adjustments to our initial impressions even in the face of additional data. Now imagine you're a procurement manager negotiating a technology purchase. The vendor showcases very high priced options initially, creating budget concerns on your side. Now they then introduce much more affordable alternatives which, compared to the premium choices, appear much more reasonable. However, these budget-friendly options are still priced far above the market average. The initial high priced offerings, however, might have anchored your perception, potentially leading to an overpriced decision. Now, what can we do to counter the anchor effect? Again, the first step is to be aware of its existence. Then you want to remind yourself that the initial anchor is 
is not an absolute reference, but merely a starting point that should be subject to negotiation. Bias number three is the availability bias. The availability heuristic or bias is a cognitive bias in which people assess the likelihood of an event or the importance of a piece of information based on its ease of recall from memory. Now, in other words, that means that we tend to overestimate the significance of things that come readily to our mind, often due to either their recent occurrence or their emotional impact. Now, imagine you are a project manager gearing up for a new product launch. As you evaluate potential risks, a recent memory comes rushing back. A past hiccup that, although rare, caused quite a bit of stress. Now, this memory now takes center stage in your decision-making process, making you overly cautious and potentially hindering the project's progress. To counter the availability heuristic, it's essential to acknowledge that the ease of recalling information doesn't necessarily correlate with its likelihood of occurrence or importance. When making decisions, consciously seek out a wide range of relevant data and systematically assess the risks as well as the benefits. Avoid letting vivid but rare past experiences overshadow the broader context of the decision at hand. The fourth bias you should keep in mind is the phase consensus bias, which is a cognitive bias that causes us to overestimate how much our own beliefs, values, as well as preferences are typical of the general population. In essence, it's assuming that others are more like us in their thinking, preferences, and behavior than they actually are. Now, imagine you're a member of a marketing team gearing up for a new product launch. You passionately believe in certain features of the product because they resonate with your personal preferences. However, there is a potential pitfall, which is assuming that what you adore will equally captivate the broader audience. This assumption may inadvertently lead to a misalignment between the product's actual appeal, the marketing strategy, and the diverse needs and preferences of the customers. This, in turn, could have a substantial impact on the success of the product launch. To counter face consensus bias, self awareness is key. Recognize that your views might not be universally shared and actively seek diverse perspectives through open dialogue and feedback. Utilize data and research to gain objective insights and avoid making decisions based solely on personal assumptions. And then the last bias I want to touch upon in today's video is the self-serving attributional bias. This bias causes us to attribute our successes to internal stable factors such as our own abilities. While we attribute our failures to external unstable factors like bad luck or other people's decisions. Here are two examples. Imagine you've just successfully completed a complex project at work. You might attribute the success to your excellent project management skills, dedication and leadership abilities. But in doing so, you might downplay the role of external factors like a supportive team, market conditions or possibly even luck. This bias can lead to overemphasizing your role and underestimating external factors in your success. Conversely, when you encounter a failure, you might attribute it to external factors. For example, if a project doesn't go as planned, you may blame unfavorable market conditions, a challenging team member, or resource constraints. However, this downplays your personal responsibility and inhibits self-examination and learning from your mistakes. The self-serving attributional bias can lead to misjudgments in both success and failure scenarios. Attributing success solely personal factors can lead to overconfidence and reduced accountability. Conversely, blaming failures solely on external factors can hinder personal growth. In reality, both success as well as failure are oftentimes influenced by a mix of internal as well as external factors. Recognizing and addressing this bias is essential for a balanced self-assessment and effective decision-making. And as we wrap up our exploration of cognitive biases, remember that becoming aware of and addressing these biases is a fundamental step toward more effective decision making and clearer critical thinking. If you found these insights valuable, don't forget to hit the like button and share your favorite tip in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Stay tuned for more empowering content and valuable career and leadership tips by subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next video.